American authorities have charged four Iranians with plot to kill an Iranian American, uh, sorry, to kidnap, excuse me, an Iranian American author and human rights activist. <sighs> Masih Alinejad, who you see there, was the primary target. Authorities also say the four defendants plotted to lure three individuals in Canada and one individual in the UK back to Iran. All of those targeted are critical of the Iranian regime. The individuals in Canada have not been identified. The suspects are, largely, are allegedly part of an Iranian intelligence network and they are alleged to have hired private investigators to monitor, photograph and video record all of their targets. The White House weighed in on the news today. We categorically condemn Iran's dangerous and despicable reported plot to kidnap a U.S. citizen on U.S. soil. We will forcefully defend U.S. citizens and U.S. interests. Masi Alinejad is in New York. Masi Alinejad, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me again. Uh, so this kidnapping plot, this alleged plot, is just being made public now, but I understand that you've known about this for quite some time. How did you come to learn that the Iranian regime was allegedly targeting you like this? From the FBI. But I have to say that I didn't know about the details. When I learned about the details last night, I myself was shocked. I couldn't believe it that like the Iranian hostage takers were so close to me. And um, the FBI just came to my house eight months ago and they told me that um, you're under surveillance in um, the intelligence service hired a private investigator, send them to um, take photos of your private life, photos of my husband, my stepchildren, even my movement with my friends, you know, walking around which location I go, that's why the FBI actually sent me to safe houses. And um, um, yeah, that's it. Right. I knew that before. So, so they told you this eight months ago that you were under surveillance. I mean, what did you do? Did you just keep living your life as normal or did you, you have to take extra precautions? I mean, how did you react? To be honest, I did a great job. Instead of getting scared and panic, I started to give voice to voiceless people, you know, like every day. That made me more determined. From the beginning, of course, I got shocked. I got goosebumps. I was crying. Like last night, I cried. But today, I'm a different person. I don't know how. But this is just, you know, my nature. Be not me. It's like Iranian people's nature. Because we've been used to this. Like... The, the killing, kidnapping, torturing, arresting, like this is in the DNA of the Islamic Republic. All those families of the Ukrainian airplane now crying for justice in Canada, they understand what I say. Mm -hmm. This is our daily mm -hmm. life, you know? We have to fight every day with death threats. I was actually joking with the FBI saying that, hey, come on, you saying that I'm not safe here in America. Every day I receive a death threats. The government actually is sending me message saying that we're going to throw acid on your face. We're going to, you know, kill your brother. We're going to kill your family. What's new for me? And, you know, this is, this is so sad. But this is the regime that we're dealing with every day. So you say, what's new for me? So let's, let's just talk about that if we can. So uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, because there's a lot of moving parts in this. But they, these people were uh, alleged to have been spying on you, essentially, videotaping your movements, you know, taking pictures, following whatever. And the intent was to kidnap you and then abscond with you in a boat to Venezuela, where presumably, how, how does it work? What was, was that the plan? Look, it's like a scary movie, isn't right. it? Just think about it. Someone just following you every day, chasing you, and you just learned that they're gonna grab you in a speed boat, taking to somewhere else to kidnap me, kidnap you, and the end of the story is not something strange for us Iranians. Because last year, Ruho Lazam, another journalist, got kidnapped. He was in France. You know, they thank to FBI uh, police that actually warned me that you're not allowed to travel at all. But nobody warned Roald Lazam in France, or maybe warned them, but they allow him to go to Iraq. So the government kidnapped him from Iraq. It just breaks me, my heart when I think about his two children. So they were going to do the same to me, to kidnap me. I saw my picture before on Iranian national television, putting like, hanging me, and taking my poster in Friday prayer. And they 
published another poster of me, actually, um, you know, in Qasem Soleimani, who actually got killed by the U.S., uh, by the U.S., they actually uh, put a poster on me saying that Massey should be executed. So that, will, that would have been the end of this story. And today I was not here if there were success. But it was a shameful attempt. Well, that, that's my next question. Had, had this plot succeeded, this alleged plot succeeded, and obviously it's been interrupted and arrests made and indictments filed, I, I, I mean, would you have been executed at the end of this, do you think? That's the end of the story. Look, every day I'm covering the stories of innocent people who get executed in Iran. Iranian well-known wrestler Nabi Dafgari's crime was only participating in a peaceful protest. They executed him. Ruhollah Zam, he was just peacefully doing his job as a journalist. I cannot believe it myself that, oh my God, I, several times I imagined myself like, he was in the car and immediately he found out, oh my God, these are Iranian officials from intelligence service. That would have been the end of the story if FBI didn't warn me. And, 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 and what I'm trying to say here that the FBI actually found that this is not only me. They found that the same uh, inter intelligence service uh, uh, group were trying to kidnap Canadian citizens. Well, th that, was Canadian my next, that was my next question, because they're unidentified in the indictment, but it says that the four defendants were also targeting three individuals residing in Canada and one individual residing in the United Kingdom. What do you know about that element uh, of this plot? Do you know anything you can share with us? No, they didn't say anything to me, but I want to actually call on Canadian government. I want to call on Justin Trudeau. I want to call on British government that you have to now do a proper and serious investigation to protect your own journalists. To be honest, it's not only me. Many journalists are living under, uh, you know, threats on their daily basis. And many activists, many opposition dissidents, Many families, like it breaks my heart when I think of the families of the uh, passengers, 176 passengers who got killed by the Revolutionary Guards, and now their families are under threats. And this is the right time that the U.S. government, the Canadian government, British government, they have to get united and take an action because this is what... ISIS do, you know? Do you, do you think the Canadian government's doing enough to protect the Canadians, uh, the, the family members of the people who are on that plane? No. You know why? Because, the, well, okay, Justin Trudeau was amazing. When uh, the revolutionary got shot down the airplane, uh, he was really supportive, but mm. people had a lot of hope. But now I think that his tone has changed Maybe they don't know the Islamic Republic. We, the people of Iran, we know that killing, kidnapping, torturing, murdering is in the DNA of the Islamic Republic. You know, maybe some people think that I'm radical, but let me be clear with you. What is different between Islamic Republic and ISIS? ISIS take hostage. ISIS behead people. The Islamic Republic has been doing this for 40 years, hanging people, taking hostages. ISIS actually lashes people. This is what the Islamic Republic has been doing. So that is why when ISIS was there, the whole world took action. Right, right now, they have to do the same. Otherwise, you have to fight with this terrorism in your own land. It is not about me. It is not about us Iranian people. It is about the whole world. Because to me, the Islamic Republic is like coronavirus. If you don't fight against it, it's not going to just stay there. Okay. It's going to infect the rest of the world. I, I, I know you say it's not about you, but I have one question about you. I mean, given the arrest and the threats that you say you've, you face and now learning you've been under surveillance and the alleged target of a kidnapping plot, do you have protection now? Do you feel safe? Is, is somebody watching your back right now? That's two different questions. <laughs> yes, I am under protection of FBI, but I feel safe. I'm going to be honest with you. As far as the Islamic Republic is in power, not only me, even you are not safe. Right now that I'm talking to you, British citizens, Swedish citizens, German citizens, French citizens, they are in prison in Iran. They didn't do anything wrong. The Islamic Republic took them hostage and using them like bargaining chip. So that's why none of us should feel safe when this dictatorship is in power. This is 21st century, and it's not too much to ask to the leaders of free world to hear the cries of Iranian people. 
Well, Mazia Linajad, I'm glad you were here uh, to do this interview. Thank you for making the time, and I hope you stay safe. Thank you very much for speaking with me today. It was a pleasure for me. Thank you. Global Affairs Canada released a statement about this story, uh, saying, Canada firmly condemns Iran for its pattern of intimidation and foreign interference. We take this issue very seriously, and Canada will continue to work in close collaboration with allies and partners around the world to counter foreign interference and to protect journalists. For more on this now, Ward Elcock, a former director of the Canadian Security Intelligence Service. Mr. Elcock, thanks for joining me. My pleasure. So uh, those, uh, first, I've never heard of a story like this, I have to say. This, this kind of blows my mind what, what uh, is going on here. But those charged in the U.S., um, three people in Canada were targets in the wider plot. What do we know about Iran's networks here in Canada? Well, it, the, the Iranians don't have a, a mission here anymore. So uh, to the extent that they do operate here, they would likely operate uh, through... Uh, essentially agents that they've recruited, uh, people who've gone back to Iran who've been recruited or people who have been infiltrated over the years, uh, who are controlled by remotely by, by this uh, Iranian intelligence service in, in Iran, probably. One, one of the things that Ms. Alinejad told us is that uh, the FBI agents had been following this plot for many months, that she'd been told about this eight months ago. So why would officials not act on it sooner? What's the strategy behind letting it play out for as long as they did? Well, counterintelligence is a bit different from counterterrorism. Counterterrorism, you, you want to prevent something that's going to go bump in the night. Yes, you can have something that's going to be serious in a counterintelligence operation, but generally speaking, those kinds of operations mature over a long period of time. It's slow for the Iranians to launch an, an operation like the one that's described is hard, less hard for them, for example, to uh, to try and rec try and, and, and encourage somebody to return to Iran where they could be arrested. Uh, but they, they, even though it, even that probably takes time to develop. Uh, it takes time for you to discover all the ramifications of, of, what's in, of what they've got in place. Uh, and even when you've discovered all those ramifications, how serious is, is the event that's planned? If you need to warn somebody, you can warn them. Uh, but if you want to try and control uh, their operation or recruit people within their operation, then you may let it run for even longer. Uh, it isn't a case of, of you find it and arrest it right away. So the U.S. officials let the woman at the center of this know that she was being monitored, as I said, uh, about eight months ago, uh, knowing that we know now that there were three Canadians or three people in Canada who were also potentially targeted by this. Sh should we assume that those people would have also have been given a heads up? I would assume that that's the case. The, the Bureau and, and the service would work very closely together, uh, have over the years, and, and I'm sure that that information would have been passed uh, uh, to to the Canadians, uh, to the service. Um, and they may have known for some time uh, that information. I assume they did. Would they have been offered the same kinds of protection that Ms. Alina Jab was offered in the U.S.? Uh, from the sounds of it, they may not need exactly the same kind of protection because as I understand it from your lead-in, uh, the Iranian intention with the three Canadians was to lure them to Iran. Mm -hmm. So it's more a case of you really don't want to go home. Right. So you're given a heads up so you can just make smarter choices rather than having people on you 24-7 like it appears Ms. Alinejad got from the FBI and, and, and even to this day. It'd be more of a warning than close body protection or something like that. Yes, but, all, but even then it, it can be very difficult for people because the Iranian regime brutal as it is, uh, often takes its revenge on, on family members who are still in Iran or connections in Iran. So they can sometimes make it, they can put an enormous amount of pressure on, on people in Canada uh, to do things either for them or to come home or, or whatever it happens to be. In an operation like this, at what point would Canadian officials have been brought into the loop? Would it have been eight months ago uh, when Ms. Alinejad was told what was happening? Could it have been some time after that? And, 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 and how does a process like that work? I suspect that they would have known uh, some months even before uh, the, the, she was taken into protective custody. Um, my assumption is this, is this has been running even longer than eight months. 
And, and how does an intelligence agency respond to something like this? And, and how should a government respond uh, to something like this? That foreign agents are trying to lure people out, out of the country to do them harm. Well, in some respects, one thing to deal with a kidnapping attempt, if you're trying to protect people who are being lured back to Iran, then really what you're, you're, you're doing is you're providing a warning function. Uh, and so really it's a case of trying to determine what the Iranian networks are in Canada uh, to keep on top of them. As I said, not necessarily to wind them up because once you wind them up, can you find the next one that they try and infiltrate? So, so you want to watch the networks you're aware of. Uh, you may even want to, as I said, try and control them uh, by infiltrating agents into that network uh, so that you even have an even better grip on what that network is doing. And so you can protect people who are in any danger of either, in this case, being kidnapped or simply lured back to Iran for, for arrest. You know, how common it, our activities like this? Just as a final question, because I was struck by the story that uh, Ms. Alinejad told us. I mean, is it, how common is, is this sort of behavior by Iran in, in places like the U.S. and in countries like Canada? Um, the extreme nature of what they seem to be planning in this one is, is uh, certainly further than I've heard before. Uh, having said that, trying to lure people back to Iran or uh, other countries trying to lure their citizens back to their country. It's not all that unusual. It doesn't happen every day by any means, but it does happen. Okay. Ward Elcock, thank you so much for your time. It's a pleasure. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.